Hi, welcome back to Hawthorne Hedge Garden Railway. In the last video, I unboxed the loco and had a look at some of the components and booklets that came with it. In this video, I'll detach the loco from the base, add some small details and attach the tender to the loco. Keep watching as I did have a few small issues and reached out to Alice Clark customer service. I'll cover the issues identified in this video and let you know how I got on with Alice Clark customer service. I have removed the four bolts securing the loco to the base. So now we lift it off. The tender isn't connected to the loco. Oh, I can put the base aside for now. Here's the detail underneath. Water scoop. These holes were the holes for attaching to the base. Here we have the drop link coupling, sprung buffers. It's a metal chassis. I'm not too sure whether the rear light works. I'll have to see that when we're running. Here we have the, the loco. The bogey, it's all metal, very heavy, so it should work really well. You can see the looks like brass bushings there. Before fitting the tender, you need to fit these doors. I don't think it'll be possible to get them on once the tender is fitted. They are articulated. But be careful. These hinges are extremely delicate. They're like a, a plastic hair. Doesn't take much to break them. I think I'll be looking for a spare for this one. I've got it back together, but it's not very strong. There are some cylinder inserts, they're just push fit. So I've push fitted them into place just for photograph purposes. It recommends that you don't use these if you're using second radius turns. And here on the underside, these parts here are just push fit as well. So again, they don't recommend them if you're using second radius turns, but I'll put them on for now. You can see the steps are attached. I fitted the drain cocks but again they don't recommend them for small radius curves. And you can see there isn't much clearance there so again it's something that would need to be tested. But they do look really nice. This part is described as the large AWS tank. It's also a smaller one. It doesn't mention this one in the instructions. It says this one should be fitted in here. I haven't seen it in photographs of Eric Tracy. So if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. I fitted the tiny wind deflectors. Really fine scale, really nice, but I'm not surprised they didn't fit them at the factory. And I fit them in place with micro crystal clear it's, uh, for fitting canopies to airplanes, that type of thing. But it dries completely clear. I've attached the DCC plug and the draw bar is attached. I mentioned earlier that I had some problem with the cab doors. They were very brittle. At this stage, both of them have broken. The hinges have broken and broke both of them. My bigger concern was the speedo cable. The loco runs very smoothly on its wheels. 
but once the speedo cable was fitted the wheels could rotate so much the rod would snag on the back of the speedo unit. I took some photographs and I emailed them to Alice Clark and also mentioned the issue with the doors. I emailed them at 11.30. Within an hour I had a phone call back from one of Alice Clark's team. They were aware that the cab doors were a bit brittle and they are in the process of getting new doors made for the Black 5 and they, I believe, will be supplying these to everybody who's bought one already. Regarding the Speedo cable, I don't know whether it's just a problem with my loco or whether it's all of them, but they are getting a new cable to me which will solve the problem. Luckily I fitted the Speedo cable and just rotated the wheels gently to make sure everything was running right to make sure everything was running well and I noticed the snag. If you were to run the loco with a bad speedo cable fitting I think you could do a lot of damage to the rods and gears. If you intend to fit the cable make sure that it's running smoothly. I'll try to show you now where the problem is on the cable. The speedo cable locates into the body just here. There are two holes just underneath here. So that will be super glued into place. You undo this screw and this part then fits in. There is a, a small nub here to engage inside and then you replace the screw. The problem is this little protruding part here it needs to be flush because as the rods rotate they snag here. Just make sure if you have your logo and you're fitting the rods just make sure that this isn't protruding it should be flush and check because you could damage you could damage the rods or the gear putting on due pressure on. I've also bought some of these drop link couplings. I will at least fit these to the tender. There isn't any coal load. It would be nice to put some wheel coal in here. I have the, so I have the logo on my test track. Let's have a look at the sound files and running. I'm using a Gage Master Prodigy Advance. I've already changed the loco number from its 03 to number 5428. Running on the loco is very smooth. You can just push it along with one finger. Put it on for crawl. in reverse at the moment. Change direction. It's on speed step two. might work even better if I clean the track. I'll stop it there and bring it back. So very very smooth operation, very quiet. And now we try turning on the sound. One thing I did notice when I turned on the sound first volume was very very low so I've tried to increase it with CV266 I don't know if that's the correct way to do it but I haven't put it up too loud for the sound test I have placed a microphone in the tender so we'll see how that goes so let's start up the sound with one
one whistle on number three. Let's go for two whistles. Portion four. The whistles are, I believe, speed dependent, so the whistle will last longer when it's coasting at speed. Function 5 is described as reverse or cut-off effect, but I have no idea what that means. Function 6 is coal shoveling, and that's only possible if F0 is engaged. And F0 is the firebox doors, open-close sounds and firebox lighting effect. I've dimmed the lights in the hope that we'll see something from the firebox glow, so I'll use function zero. I'm afraid the camera isn't able to pick it up. There is a faint glow, although the firebox isn't open. I don't know whether it's supposed to open, but I can see a glow on the floor and I can see a glow inside the firebox. But once that's working, we can try function 6, coal shoveling. And we switch, that's enough coal. Function 7 is described as live steam injector. Function 8 is a blower. Function 9 is flange squeal and it's speed related. So let's try function 9. and then in reverse. Function 10 is safety valve lifted. Function 11 is the handbrake function. Handbrake on. Handbrake on. Okay, thanks. And if we hit function 11 again. Function 12 is dispatch whistle while standing or detonators when moving. So let's try one standing first of all. There appear to be various whistle sounds that change at random. Let's try function 12 while it's moving.
Function 13 is described as a wagon snatching feature. I haven't noticed any sound with this. Function 14 is heavy train, light train, mode toggle. I'm not too sure how to do that. I haven't seen the detailed instructions, but I'll try F14. Doesn't seem to be doing anything while the loco is stationary. I haven't noticed anything while it's moving either, so I'm not too sure what the heavy train light engine load means. Function 15 is cylinder drains opened. Function 16 is calling up tender. Function 17 is tender water flowing. No, the tender cap isn't open. Function 18 is shunt mode, half speed plus no inertia or momentum. So I'm not too sure what to do with that on the test track. Function 19 is described as overall volume selection, cyclic toggle. And I'm not sure what that means. I haven't been able to adjust the volume with that. So I'll contact Alice Clark for more details on that. Function 20 is your directional working loco lamps. So front and back lamps work depending on the direction of travel. As you can see the front light is now on, we're going forward. And now let's put it into reverse. And the rear direction light comes on. Function 21 is buffering and coupling feature. Function 22 is maintain steam feature. I'm not too sure what that does. Function 23 is described as ejector. Function 24 is a crew conversation. Clear my side. Clear. Okay. Function 25, crew conversation 2. Turn on the drive. Okay, she's all yours. And function 26, crew conversation 3 is one of my favourites. Box 
that we might be stuck here for a while. That's it, bro. Okay. There are many other functions for this local to increase playability. There are detailed instructions available, but I haven't been able to find them yet. So I'll be contacting Alice Clark to get help with this. So that's all for now with the sound test. It seems to be a lovely runner, very, very smooth. Lights work. There is a, a dummy lamp in here, but it doesn't do anything, it doesn't have any function. So front lamp, rear lamp, they work directionally. Lovely smooth runner. It seems to be doing something now. But that's all for now. Hope this was of some use to people who either have this logo or are getting one. I still need to do some more research on the sound functions. One thing is in particular how to adjust the volume of the various sounds. When it's running on my outdoor garden layout I like to have the whistles quite loud. I'm not too worried about the, the loco sound itself. But some really nice sounds on this. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button to support the channel. There'll be more coming soon. Hopefully when the weather gets better, I'll get it running on the outdoor layout and see how it works pulling coaches. Most of my bends are larger than radius 2, but there is one that I'm a bit suspicious of. It might be over radius 2, but it's, quite, it's still quite tight. So we'll see how it copes. And also being a garden railway, it's quite flat, but there are some undulations, so we'll see how it copes. I think it'll do really well. All the wheels seem to be sprung. The front bogey is very heavy, very sturdy. I'm sure it'll cope with everything. So looking forward to testing more soon. I'm going to put up another video here and here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Big thank you for watching.